this uh, game or this one. Everybody get caught up on microphones. All right. I like we had like a mini breakout session. Um, that's, I, I uh, notoriously am not a good audio person. I say to myself. Um, so uh, that yeah, talk to them about that. Uh, so. Uh, stepping it up a little bit. Okay, you're doing video. Again, I'm doing long form, so so uh, maybe I'm doing something a little different. Uh, we talked about, you know, again, in, in the last and other sessions about doing live streaming and having that audience and everything. Uh, so a little more about what I do on Tuesday nights. I'll kind of give you a glimpse. One, into my insanity, and two, into some potential things you could do. Um... I've been big on since the start having a live chat room. One reason why I love Google Hangouts, because you can do the live thing, right? Um, and there's a lot of interaction opportunities there. Uh, so, like even when we had an audio stream, I was the guy with the Shoutcast server sitting in my office that was hooked up, and I could get a whole 15 listeners to listen to us live at one time, and I completely bootleg music and just put a playlist up and everything. Uh, and that's how I started podcasting before I started podcasting. Uh, we actually, what well, we started on there, doing the wrestling show. Yeah. And, uh, just a an aside, uh, and that, and we had AOL chat room, maybe? Yeah, I think that's right. Something like that? Yeah, we'd set up some kind of Or set up something on the site, because I was doing the westernpajugglos.com at the time, and that's, everything spun out from, from that, and we just parlayed that to what we have now. Um, so, on Tuesday nights, I do six shows. Uh, Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, which is for a magazine uh, that you can freely find at local yoga and hypnotherapist shops, amongst other places in the area of that of that line. Um, which kind of spins off from the whole Seclair thing. Uh, I, uh, we do the uh, movie, Rambling Movie Minute, that needs a way better title with Malengo. We do Awesome Cast, that's our tech Pittsburgh focused uh, show and um, and of course boss battle with my friends from insertcointobegin.com talking about video games. We do the Wrestling Mayhem show and we do have a new spinoff we started at the beginning of the year called the Indie Mayhem show because the people that want to talk about John Cena don't care about the local guy that just won the championship in Pittsburgh, right? So we turn that into an interview show and it's been kind of fun. Um, so as far as what we get out of it, and there were some questions about this. Uh, about about what we do for awesome cast, just so everybody kind of gets an idea. This is post edited here. Uh, this is a slice on Broadway. I'm hooking it up here. Everybody go check them out down in Bijou. I know everybody's local, um, but uh, the sponsor we got they, they send us a pizza every week and we talk about them. It's it's been a really good relationship. Um, <laughs> but uh, and then yeah, I put the I put our, our our intros, outros, everything like that in here. We get to the thing. There's my big head on a TV again. Um, this. Graphics. This. Switching to the people on the couch. Switching to the person up on uh, Google Hangout. This is all done in live. I don't edit anything else in this thing, unless I screwed something up, um, until I put the stuff on the end. The outro music, the hey, go check out storytronmedia.com, another podcast, da 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 da. Um, the exception is. Wrestling Mayhem show, because it's always been so long, so I put a break in the middle. Uh, and just it's an old kind of legacy thing, so we used to split it up. Because some, because one person said that they like to put it on a CD to listen to in their car, like, eight years ago. <laughs> so we were accommodating that. Plus it helped our numbers when we split the show every week, so we had more stuff for people to download, right? Um, did I switch to the other people? Is anyone just working here? Um, so we have this. I, you know, I got a nice, real microphone that my wife bought me. It's a, you know, some kind of podcaster microphone and an XLR and everything. There's the Dutters on the couch, and I, we tried to put a little bit of a set, try to crop out the water heater. Uh, so, and it's nice. Uh, I'm using a program called Wirecast, and, and there's another one I actually started with uh, called Boinks TV, B-O-I-N-X TV. I think it's a cheaper option of the two. Uh, but Wirecast seems to be becoming the standard. Um, and it's nice, because um, there's a couple things you can do. Of course, you got the graphics, you can switch it. It's sitting on a um, 
Windows 8 i7 computer I bought at the beginning of the year because I was tired of taking my iMac from my office and carrying it all the way downstairs and plugging it in and hope I didn't screw up any of the connections and carrying it back upstairs and then I edit everything and get the rest of the work for the week. So I finally broke down and bought a computer. Um, what does it look like on the other side? Uh, a mess. Well, there's, there's a little bit. There's Melendio sitting in. Uh, so that's what I'm sitting in front of. Um, there's the monitor that you see behind you in the shot. Um, I don't know why I'm pointing over there. Um, so there's like just the monitor there that's just shooting out there. Um, it's nice because I also have uh, two TVs because I take everybody's old. If you have an old computer or TV or something, give me a call because that's how I furnish all this. Uh, most of the computers in here that, uh, that you'll see in a moment, um, I did not pay for uh, over the years. Anybody has a busted computer that they're like, oh, I'm done with this thing. Um, if it's something that I can go into Google Hangout, and it's fast enough for that, and I can get a video feed on there, I'll take it, and I'll reformat it, and maybe put old Windows XP so I can get a little more juice out of it, right? And we'll, we'll kind of get a little more into that. Uh, this is an old, this old, old laptop here that can barely do anything. That's great for a chat room. That's great for, I can put that in a chat room, and that's not going to go anywhere. You can always look up there and see what's going on and see what crazy gifts these guys have put in the chat room to distract my ass. Um, and it's really nice for that. It's only on Twitter, Sorg. What's that? It's only on Twitter. It's only on Twitter. <laughs> only on Twitter. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, just the laptop I have there that uh, I, I got show notes up and everything. Um, this is an order picture. Because uh, at the time, I was doing Wirecast and we're still trying to use the cameras like you see in the back of the rooms here. So, so this kind of starts getting into your question. Oh, it's so dark. I didn't realize how dark that was. I'm sorry. You want to turn that over and like that. Uh, that's not going to help. It's just the screen. Just on. There, just for the oh. moment at least. There you go. Okay, so, so what we have here is I was taking my old cameras because in order one, uh, find me a Mac with FireWire ports that I can put two or three cameras in. Good luck. That's where you guys start looking at Black Magic and everything. Um, so and there's my water heater. Uh, <laughs> so I had these coming into a very old video switcher, which is the exact same one that I used, not the exact model that I used back in like 2000 when I had media class in high school. Um, and then that fed in through this to FireWire so I could use it in Wirecast with all my other stiffy stuff. I, it's, that's why I say it's the insanity. Um, so what I'm doing, what the nice thing about Wirecast is not only can I plug in, right now I just have USB cameras. I bought the 270s because I'm cheap and I plug those in and it's great quality and that's what on um, the awesome cast you were just watching, that's that. We have both. Okay. And it works. Nothing looks crystal clear like your stuff. Like we get drops and with an iPhone, like laptop. Yeah. Uh, I know some of the guys were using XSplit when we did the extra light thing because we were trying to get some. Because we were doing the hangout, but we wanted to actually broadcast some of our footage and okay. stuff. Because I mean, it's, it's a twenty. Extra life's a twenty-four hour gaming marathon that you can do and have donations. It's up to you to stream it, but we want to try to do something, especially since for our site and everything, and we're putting our our network and everything. Um, I just plugged whatever I could into, um, oh no, I, I couldn't even get that going because black magic's been a problem with me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it doesn't work half the time. And yeah, I can't I get, that too. I, have, I have the card in, in my Windows 8 machine and I have the, um, so people don't know what I'm talking about. We're, we're having a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> conversation here we need to get out of. Uh, what I'm talking about, and th this is something that you can use um, if you're really, you know, to get certain inputs in. This might be a 301 topic. Um, and, it, and I've been playing with these. I have a USB 3 model and uh, the card to go into the Windows 8 machine. Uh, the idea is you can take the inputs, you, you can plug this in and your Wirecast or Google Hangout or something. Uh, one big thing, and the reason why I have two separate cameras going on here, uh, last I knew Google Hangout will not take FireWire. Um, we could, there's some workarounds, but since we don't, it, it, not everything's a Mac Pro we're using today, so we're going with this. Because um, I would love to have that be what's broadcasting, but the problem
problem we were having. You saw the workaround I had before with a camera and another board. Um, that's we just uh, you just don't even bother with that. We try to find other options like the webcams and stuff like that. Uh, X splits a whole other thing. I I'm not familiar with it. Uh, but it, and of course you're you're doing gaming, I, I presume. Uh, just regular video content. Just really really. I, I, I thought it was uh, targeted for gaming. No, Call of Duty. It is okay. But um, but this is yeah. If you're higher end and you have a good camera that has the HDMI out, um, this is kind of a side but a little tip I learned. This is a nice Alex Lindsay tip. Um, is uh, if you get those like hard drive cameras. Um, and I don't know if this has changed, but uh, the one tip I go by is if you want to get a low-end camera, and you get one of those hard drive cameras, you know, they're real junky, and they're HD, HD, but they're compressed so much to go on that drive or an SD card, uh, and you paid like under $1,000 for it, maybe 300 bucks. but if it has an HDMI out, that's still a pure HDMI signal. Canons, I understand, have the best lenses as far as those go, um, so if you got one of those, Never record straight to the camera. Take your HDMI, get something like this that you can plug an HDMI straight into a computer. You get that pure signal, you're gold. And you just did it for a lot cheaper than buying like a $3,000 camera like I did. You know, um, I'm actually looking, I have a hardware switcher, and that's what I use for wrestling and live productions, but it's on the SD. Uh, really popular apparently on the, on the church circuit, by the way. Uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out a solution where I can get a couple of these for my MacBook Pro and hopefully do a live switching with HD. Because um, the other option is for this... Yeah, we want to get away from spending hours and hours to post video. Post, and that's the biggest thing. And, and that's what I'm doing is, is streamlining this. Um, I'll get more into Let me talk a little bit about Wirecast. Uh, so, I mean, there's an idea. This is a little different. You see back when I had about eight computers lined up here. Um, and this is what I'm talking about, how I'm taking old computers. This is, this is a 2007 iMac. This computer's dead. Um, and these are like, oh, geez, what am I using now? Uh, I have <coughs> Core, du Core Duo 2 uh, 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 Dell, uh, the iMac, and thankfully I got this Windows 8 machine kind of by luck. Um, and... There's another one in there. There's another one in there I kind of use. Um, and how there's another one, if nothing else, I'm big on redundancy. Okay, I'm using Wirecast. If I'm starting playing with Black Magic and it crashes, I just lost my entire hour long awesome cast, right? Um, so, I don't know which button this is. We'll see it looks. Maybe? Lights? So, so you're doing your, your, your show. You don't want to lose it. Like something won't be weird, right? Um, um, so, so you're doing your, your, your show. You don't want to lose it. Like something won't be weird, right? Um, so I'm pushing again. I got a nice soundboard here. That's I've even updated that since too. Um, so it's splitting on and it's going to my wirecast and I'm, everything's coming in here. Um, and I'll get into a little more about how I'm bringing some of the Skypes in. Uh, I'm also pushing the audio to an older computer, a, I don't know, a Pentium something, who knows. It's enough to run Audacity, see Audio Podcasting 101, um, and it's a backup, if nothing else. Even if I screwed that up, I know most of my people are in the audio streams anyways, at least I got that audio stream. I can spend time and try to recover the video. Other nice thing of Wirecast. If you're recording, one, you can record multiple formats. Watch yourself. Make sure that your computer, like, watch the CPU. Uh, watch your disk. Um, try it a few times. Make sure, um, uh, you know, it, you, you may want, like, some crazy 1080p H.264 thing, or you want to do everything in ProRes, uh, Apple ProRes, for editing if you're going right into Final Cut. Uh, just watch. Kind of experiment before you go deep into we're doing the show now. Also, thankfully, because I know I got a kick-ass i7 computer, um, I'm also streaming. Uh, we were streaming to Justin TV until they blew up. Uh, we were streaming to, uh, we are currently still streaming a, a Ustream just because it's a backup. 
Um, YouTube Live is really awesome. I hope I get some time. I can kind of dive a little bit more into YouTube Live here. Um, just like the Hangouts, everything we record here today, even if I screwed all those up and didn't go switch every, all the tapes on my crazy run here, um, we at least have that. I can at least do something with that because that's in YouTube. If I'm using YouTube Live, which is one of the sources my Wirecast is going out to, now everything I've done, I've had something crash in the middle of a show or something like oh, I, something, I hit a keystroke and it stopped recording and something weird happened, right? But I was able to go into YouTube download my eight-hour file, because it's my entire night of all six shows that I did, uh, and clip that out, pretty decent audio, or I can grab my audio back up, that's your redundancy. If you're doing a long show, especially. If you're like, well, we're doing five minutes at a time, because we're trying to be Gary Vaynerchuk, it's not such a big deal. Um, but presumably, if you're doing this, you want to live switch, and you're trying to do something, you're trying to do long form, right? You're trying to do a longer conversation, yeah. um, which is generally talking as. I don't push the envelope with this. Um, I want to. You can bring in graphics. You can bring in other videos. You can turn it into a full news production. Uh, I'm using Wirecast 5. 5. Um, Maybe we need to switch because X Split is for gaming. You said yeah, know, it's, it's, it's only got one, it also one does, purpose. Well, it, no, there's two, there's two separate downloads now. Yeah. One's for podcasting or like live okay. streaming, okay. and the other one's for gaming. But it's like a cheap option. This is, I think it's been like show. about 400 bucks. I know the upgrade was like about 150 when I had to pump up the five. Okay. They have six coming out, so wait if it's not out yet. And I know one, one cool feature about it is it's going to have integrated uh, social media feeds. That's but cool. really, I can just kind of create, you know, a social media Twitter fall and kind of crop it out and just put it in overlay myself. I mean, I don't have to plug it right into the software, right? Um, let's see, titles. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, uh, so... So in our video, we have, let's go back to this guy. Um, actually, let's go to something a little more. This kind of setup, and I will actually hit a newer one, and I'll mute it because I don't know what we want to actually. You see, we have a world destruction. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Slice Off Broadway. You're awesome. Uh, so we get into this, and I'm getting into introducing everybody, right? Um, did we do anything real weird this week? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. No one knows. Uh, forgive if there's any weird ones. It's uh, weird. I'd say muted. Is it likely? It's muted. <laughs> We're all adults. Okay, yeah, we're all adults here. That'd be an effort. Um, so, there's Will. He's on Google Hangout. Uh, Rizzle, no, I like Rizzle's on this one. There's a friend from San Antonio. Uh, and, uh, um, um, I can't say enough good things about this kid, by the way. This kid started writing the show when he was like 15, right? Now he's in college at the University of San Antonio. He now commentates for NWA Inspire Pro, which is a startup really making traction, independent wrestling organization down there. Now writing for NWA Ringside. I, I can't believe it. He's like, he's, he's just like creating his own mayhem show community down there like we have up here in Pittsburgh. It's just awesome. Um, so, like I said, I've taken all those old computers, right? Cool thing about Wirecast, there's a free application you can download called Desktop Present. So anything displayed on a computer, presuming it's fast enough, uh, it'll take that. I cropped out this, you know, his hangout, you know, just the video feed. I try not to do full screen. Unless you got a bunch of really awesome i5, i7 computers, you can just do full screen like Twit does and just capture that up, right? They're doing something different. Um, and that comes through to Wirecast as a camera. So now that's something I can switch to. And now I'm a I told you I was going to get weird, sort I did get weird. Here's you hugging your Kali doll. <laughs> huh. um, it's an action figure sword. But again, <laughs> I have all this stuff going on. Kind of that accessibility we talked about 101. Somebody can join the show 
with his laptop and his Kali figure, and we're good to go, right? Um, that accessibility. And, 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 and yeah, it doesn't look too hot, and I kind of kick myself every week that we haven't approved some of the video quality on the other side of things. I'm not blaming you guys. It's me. It's me. I, I need to push the quality. Um, or maybe I got in a computer that has, you know, maybe I'm pushing the cycles too much on the CPU, right? And maybe it's a little more sketchy because I'm looking over at the Hangout and, like, they're definitely moving over here, but they're not moving over here or something, right? Um, and then you have your soundboard. I'm kind of cheating doing something different that I'm not going to talk about because I don't recommend it because I'm cheating and I'm going to get stuck with it sometime. But now each of those computers, I can go into the soundboard and get the audio from each one. And now if... If they're all on separate Skypes or separate Hangouts, this is getting really weird. <laughs> oh, we were singing a lot. I remember that now. Uh, it got weird on Tuesday night. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, so now you have three people on separate machines on a Skype individually. You've connected your soundboard so everything coming out of the soundboard goes into their computer so each so you split that out maybe you got a splitter box and that, that comes out to their computers and so you have to round trip everything right and then their audio is coming in and now if, if Will's getting a little too loud I can turn him up uh, if, if, if Riz is crying about the great Kali too much I can turn him down um, you know and, and, and you have a little bit of control it's all, all about making sure you have control over everything and when you know I say earlier um, I don't know why I do Google. I don't know why I do all this stuff because Google Hangout gives you so many of those tools because you do have control boards and it all records up there and you can bring it in, and download the file and fix it up a little bit and everything in post. This is why. Because this control, because you've created your control, right? You can control, if, maybe you have a guest on. Like uh, Hangout's really nice because I can call somebody on the phone if they don't know what a Google Hangout is or a Skype is, especially um, not a slight, but a lot of these pro, pro wrestlers, they're not very technically minded, right? Or some of these, uh, you know, doctors and stuff we have on some of the other shows. But I don't know how to do brain surgery. We, I think we did have a neuroscience scientist on one time. Uh, but, you know, they don't know how to podcast either, so I got them, right? Um, but it's a nice, again, a nice access point um, for that kind of stuff. Um, any questions about Wirecast in this kind of setup so far? So I want to look at some other options. What's the, how, how's the video source from the Skype being served? How are you patching that in? Cause this is how the, from the Skype? Yeah. We use we, we were actually using Google Hangout. Uh -huh. uh, that's that desktop presenter application. So it's actually coming over the network. Mm -hmm. But you don't have like a separate Skype computer feed coming through. No. Uh, well, okay. Each each one of these guys that you see yeah. are coming from a different computer. But they're all on Hangout. But they're all ha on Hangouts, That's awesome. and ideally you would have them on a separate Hangout, right? You're not really using Hangout the way you're supposed to use <laughs> Hangout. <laughs> you're using it as a one-on-one -on -one connection. That's so you keep that control. I know we're not doing that right now, but we're going to fix that sooner or later. Um, but they're on separate computers? For, they are for each on a computer, yeah. and each one has Desktop Presenter. And So I've loaded Desktop Presenter. And now each one of them is a camera in Wirecast. So now I got three computers with three guys. Each of them is their own camera. I got a webcam pointing at the couch. If there's somebody in the studio, that's a camera. I got me in a camera. I can uh, take those and organize them and put like, the two up you saw in the, in the first video. Yeah. I can do that. Or I can put a four up. How do you just output in video so from, from your computers that have the Google Hangouts video? How is that coming back into your it's over the network or it's, you it's have over the network. Desktop presenter is taking whatever you see on your monitor oh, okay. and turning oh, that into network. a video source over the network. Wow, that's cool. Now, so ideally, you have a lot of bandwidth? Uh, yeah, but it's all in-house. So as long as you have like at least a hundred switch or something or a gigabit in-house, right. which are like pretty standard these days, you're good. For what we, we haven't noticed any lag internally. I've noticed a little thing like even no matter how fast my MacBook Pro is, sometimes the Apple computers seem to lag a little bit. Um, so I'll just throw Windows on it and we're, we're good to go. Um, it doesn't have a Linux version. I would love some of those old machines I could throw Ubuntu on because it, it'll just, I'll, again, free up more CPU cycles, right? Um, there's some workarounds with Wine, that the, 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 the Windows emulators, but I, it's, it, I haven't got it working yet. 
Um, How about BSD? What's that? How about BSD? If you, if you have the NAS working, you can get BSD working? I don't know anything about using something maybe like written for Mac on BSD. I, I, I'm just not oh. into that. I, I but don't I mean, that's, that's most Linux. That's yeah, I, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know how that works with you. You're taking a Mac for oh, the desktop presenter is for Windows and it is for Mac. They have a specific version for each. Um, it gets funky with the Windows one because they want this like uh, .NET package 3.5 or something like that to make it work. It, it's it's kind of weird. Um, anything else? So you got you understand how the desktop presenter works? It's coming over the network and. and Creating a camera. Is it a separate piece of software, or is it's a separate piece of software that serves up by the guys that do Wirecast, which is so it plugs right in, no problem. So, so it just yeah, it's basically made to work with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, other thing, and maybe this goes with the 101. Actually, we'll get into that. We're gonna, any more questions about Wirecast in general before I go go on? So here's the cool thing. Uh, well, first of all, uh, an alternative to Wirecast, an alternative to a lot of things, um, is uh, oh, now I'm blanking on it. Uh, TriCaster, thank you. Thank you, Ted. Um, TriCaster is basically like everything I'm doing like in software on a computer that I feel like I've duct taped together, um, but more production quality and really awesome. These started at like $6,000. God, I want one. <laughs> they actually had a TriCaster on, I've seen two TriCast, I've seen two TriCasters in my short life. Uh, uh, one, we were switching a wrestling show in Cleveland for TV, and the other one, some high school, they, like Fort Cherry or something, had it uh, shooting a football game. And I'm like, how did you get a TriCaster at this small school? Um, but this is kind of the Rolls Royce of self-made production studios. Um, you got a budget, I'd go for this, you know. Um, and they can get up to, like, $20,000, and... and and it's doing the switching, and it can do the graphics, and, and it runs on one of these little boxes and stuff. Uh, it'll do all your keying. What Wirecast will do, if you have like a little green screen at home, you'll, you can do live keying as well. Um, very, make sure you got a really good camera and really good lighting, uh, I would say, from a little bit I messed with it. And also, I was trying it with the black magic and it crashed, so I'm not going to do it on a regular basis. And also, CPU, that will take a lot of CPU. You, you have to gauge everything you do. How much am I taking off the CPU? Um, I've been playing with the idea, because you can also, I think, output, like how a desktop presenter is taking those screens and, and turning them into a camera. I'm pretty sure, I, I was reading about the, one of the newer features, I'm pretty sure I can take the output from Wirecast and make it a camera somewhere else. So I can send that to a whole different computer and record it there and stream it to more sources over there. You know, I have a dedicated computer for that. Yeah. I think Twit, uh, This Week in Tech, I'm pretty sure they use this, they use the TriCaster, and I think it goes to a computer with Wirecast so they can do all their feeds out. And they're just using it as an output. Okay, so I touched on TriCaster. Um, what, getting on the output thing, and I, how I close the tab. Uh, Hangouts, of, Hangouts, of course, you can get in through Google Plus and everything, but they've also become a component of what's called YouTube Live. Um, and of course, you know, it looks like this. These are our Google Hangout versions that we've set up, and you can do a version that um, that we we push from Wirecast straight into YouTube. Again, everything records. Everything I do there on Tuesday night goes straight to YouTube. Um, or you can just do a Hangout real quick. Now, the advantage of doing it this way, and I don't know if you start it in Google Plus, you get this kind of thing. Uh, but you get this live control room, and I actually just discovered today that this happens on the Hangouts too. So you get all this kind of stuff, it lets me know how my quality is and everything. I'm keeping it on, this is a new thing that I keep an eye on, that's why I got the extra laptop. I mean, I don't, that's why I got to get another laptop in front of me now, so I can watch this. Um, so you got a lot of options here. It's, you can get in here and say you're having fun and say, hey, we canceled this event, or rescheduled, or something like that. Uh, you can set this up to insert ads, ins insert slates, graphics, highlights, you can, I can, I can set this up if, uh, so if we're during a live event and like somebody starts speaking, I can hit like hit set start up there and I can create clips straight out of what's coming out live and have these clips afterwards. I haven't done this stuff yet. There's also this a thing with, uh, if you're uploading where you can give your users that are viewing it, they can choose your camera angle. 
Yeah, you can do stuff with cameras in here too. So like, uh, like say we're doing. This would be awesome. If we did this for PodCamp 10. Uh, I, that's not official. Okay. Um, so I could set this up. Like, say we're in room A, and I throw a camera there, and I throw a camera there. Yeah, you, you can sit there and say, I want camera A. I want camera B. Like, you can pick it, you know. Uh, you can do the NASCAR, I'm in the car thing yourself, you know. Um, of course, they got a way better system for that. Uh, but this is cool, too. So here is uh, room D, right? You get stats. You know how many times it's been played back. Who's watching right now? Uh, we should pick Tatum. Room B and see if somebody was watching, but um, but and you can see. So let's you, these these here right um, are color coded. So I know how many people. I see a lot. I see three orange right here, right? So I know three people were catching that 480 stream, or or you know maybe a bunch of them were catching the 240. This is nice because um, when I broadcast on Tuesdays, I, I broadcast 480. I'm recording 720 HD. Uh, 480 is standard definition. And of course, below that is, you know, YouTube will step down, uh, you know, depending on your bandwidth. Um, but if I'm sitting here and I'm seeing everybody's loading the 360 or 480 and I'm trying to, you know, trying to conserve CPUs and like, you know, do I have the bandwidth to push a 720 stream? Because it's except you're, you're, you're pushing out 720, the full quality, and then YouTube's breaking that down. You have to get that full quality thing to YouTube first before it starts breaking this down for your users. So if you see that nobody's using 720 and you don't want that thing to buffer, kill your 720, D dump it down to 480. You get a lot of uh, options here. You can see, are people sticking around, you know? How many playbacks were there, you know? I mean, this is, this is a lot of really useful live information that now Hangout has. And you have even more with um, um, the YouTube Live side of it. And guess what? One of the options for uh, YouTube Live is a free version of Wirecast you can download. So you can get in there and play a little bit. Um, it's not full featured. I haven't really kind of poked around since I have like Wirecast on all my computers uh, with the license. Um, but you can at least get in there and do a little bit and, and kind of see how the program is. Um, again, I don't think it does a lot of graphics and stuff. Uh, but you can get familiar with it and then see if, you know, and go grab a trial and see if you can do more with it. Because uh, uh, you can download, I think, I think it's a full feature trial for the most part, but they put a watermark over it. And like the, the uh, Wirecast 5 lady voicing over your video kind of thing. Um, so it's a really good option for that. And, and, and Wirecast, like I said, it's pretty much become standard with, you know, this. And you can use, if you have anything else like an XSplit, probably. Um, Points probably. I don't know if they, they were doing the sources because I think we were kind of recording it live. I forget how we were streaming when we had Points TV. Um, any any of those you you can you can set up with um, um, YouTube Live. I think the Flash Encoder, which is what we use when we're using Viva for these streams, um, um, like you can do a pretty standard uh, the Flash Encoder application, which I think is free from Adobe. Um, just you, just if you have a feed you want to push out, you know. You heard of uh, OBS, open source broadcast something? No. I guess open source to make people say it's better than next, but you know, maybe change. For but it's like a live switch yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, broadcast thing. Yeah. Um, no, I, haven't, I haven't seen that one. Um, another. Um, I don't know if I want to get into this part a little bit. So of course, you know, I I think this is a de facto thing right now for streaming. There's of course other options. Um, um, some of the bigger guys, I mean, you know, if you become successful, you will have to think about some of this stuff. Uh, looking into something called a CDN, uh, Content Delivery Network, um, it's, it, it, it's a little sketchy and high end. Um, you know, think like, like Twit, they, they're pushing, you know, if you listen to This Week in Tech broadcast, they always see, say like, you know, bandwidth by uh, cash fly or something like that, right? Um, because you get to that point, they're sitting, they're, I mean, they're doing everything in house. They're, they have those files sitting on a server, probably, or on cash fly or something. And you get to that, you know, like Netflix, like a big discussion about net neutrality right now, about how much bandwidth Netflix is using and who pays for that one way or another. It's not just you paying at this end and they pay at this end. And there's a bunch of, you know, 
stoplights in between. I'm probably butchering the entire net neutrality <laughs> thing right now. Um, but but there's a lot of stuff going on, and when you get big enough, you got to start looking at that and and, and 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 having that option of I you know you know I was looking at these because you know Justin TV went away. Ustream ads were horrible because if you don't pay for it, which is like hundred bucks a month, Ustream is fine. If you got the budget for it, go for it. You know. And the Wirecast goes to it just fine, and it's really good quality. I've seen some really good live events. Some wrestling promotions has actually started using it. It has some pretty decent quality. I don't know how you monetize that with Ustream yet. But um, but if, again, if you're like, I don't want to go through YouTube, I won't, don't want their license under my stuff, or uh, they notice if uh, I had Pandora on in the background between podcasts one week, and I got a, hey, please start playing, ever, st please stop playing other people's stuff, basically, message. Like, it was the rudest message from YouTube I ever got. And <laughs> a big red thing popped up down there and said, we'll terminate your broadcast. Uh, one, one year, uh, we were trying to do a live broadcast discussion about E3, Ubisoft's presentation. We had no problems with the other ones. And we did, and we're emulating what you see on Twitter. They do the Apple announcements, they have it in the corner, and they're talking about it, right? news, it, it, it makes sense. Technically, we don't have rebroadcast press, right? So they're right. But YouTube on Hangout, Ubisoft, and you know, it depends on the other side. It depends on uh, the, the, the content owner, right? How strict are they going to be? And uh, they just killed, killed our stuff, closed down our account. <laughs> we were done. Like, they, just like, out of nowhere. We're just like, what happened? We don't even have an, a YouTube account anymore for, for our website. Um, so if you're into news discussion and you're playing videos on your show and music and in a fair use way you think because it's commentary you gotta consider that if you're putting anything on YouTube and that's maybe another reason to use something else is they YouTube is overzealous and if you're doing a daily news show like some people do a daily tech news show and they play a video that maybe uh, Sony BMG or whatever said uh, we own that shut it down and by the time you go through the process, and because it is fair use, and say it is fair use to them in your, in your, in, in, through their process, it comes up a day or two later. Your daily tech news show, it doesn't matter anymore, you know, and you've lost all of that. SourceFed got shut down. Well, SourceFed got shut down, uh, and SourceFed is a, a fast commentary kind of news kind of show um, where they they'll post like ten videos a day, and there was a day. And it's not a concern, kind of a different problem. I had this, got bit by this too. Sometimes, lately, you throw something up on YouTube, and it takes a day to process on their end. Nothing you can do about it, right? Because you're putting that video, and they're doing whatever ingestion settings, and so it works on their system, HTML5 version, new Flash version, all of these versions. Yeah, um, and if they've got something wrong with their server, and you're a daily thing, you just lost that day of revenue, news, you're done done. But if you're going to a CDN and you're paying 100 bucks a month YouTube, Ustream even, or, or or something like that, you have a little more, you know, to, you know, at least they'll compensate you, hopefully, you know. Um, but then you don't have that support if you depend on YouTube ads. And that's a whole other thing, is do I depend on YouTube ads for what I'm doing uh, versus other revenue uh, methods. Um, and I think there's going to be Side, but I think there's a lot of people that depend on YouTube ads that, and some already have, um, they're going to get a rude awakening at some point because they're always changing things. And uh, and a lot of people, like, as they're, some people make money and they're living exclusively on YouTube, and that can blow up at any time, you know, so. Uh, and, any questions? So it sounds like that you got rid of like sort of conventional cameras with, with uh, and just you like using USB cams because you can just go straight in USB. And just because it works the best with. Uh, well, there's two. There's two problems. One, um, having the ports for FireWire. Yeah. Uh, or getting Black Magic to work. Yep. I, I, if I get my Black Magic cards to work right, uh, and just having time to experiment is my issue. Yeah. Um, they just unreliable, aren't they? On top of it, as far as I, if you look at Amazon reviews, they're saying like. This motherboard, this chipset. And yeah, that's like what it comes down to. Like, I bought a, I'm like, I bought a new a MacBook this year, and it's got a USB three, and I went and bought the USB three. Yeah. One, because I knew I had it in it's the. It's not that easy. And it's just like, yeah, it doesn't work on Mavericks. I'm like, what the? 
<laughs> the drivers are too, too old, they have, need to be the new USB 3.0. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I, if I roll back my MacBook to like two versions of Mac OS, I think it'll start working. That stinks. They got one job. They yeah, got one yeah, job. Yeah. So, so now my solution is, well, I guess I'll go buy two Thunderbolt ones. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of a waste to that point. So um, then in your opinion, how are those, what would, what is, uh, you know, the, the Logitech cameras that you're using, and how do they, what would they compare to as far as, you know, an equivalent in a, you know, more conventional camera. We're talking iPhone cameras. Or we, or uh, like, you know. I would say iPhone level because when you look at it, it's that little lens. You know, but the it reason, is it is The reason this and looks any good quality is because that's what actually maybe the old camera. God, why don't I ever brush my hair? Punk <laughs> <laughs> rock. But uh, our webcams are just the cheap, like eighty dollar webcams. They look better at low light than the GoPro does. Really? I mean, that, that depends on the sensor, so it, it's going to go either way. Um, yeah, that C920 does a really good job. 920 is really good. Uh, if we had a good computer there, uh, what I was showing in the 101s with that Seclair guy, those Seclair guys, that would be nice, crisp video. And all that's missing is that computer. We're this close to, I'm going to get my Mac Mini sooner or later from them uh, to get that working. Uh, so, but yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's the, was it uh, 270? Um, and I mean, I have I work lights. Here's the other one. If you're for lighting, uh, go get those like ten, seven, eight dollar work lights from Walmart. And it's just in, in, I, it's in the basement, so I have the rafters. So I can just right on. Yeah. I'm amazed. I have this little LED light. I paid 30 bucks on like Amazon for it. It just like goes on the camera. And every time I'm out to shoot, everyone's like, "That's a really nice light." I'm like, "It's the cheapest thing I found." You know, it's, I don't know, I, 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 I'm missing something there, so, um, but um, as far as, I think it works for what we, what we have, you know, um, now if I look at this, I pull up my Chromecast, you know, as a video person, I'm going to see, this is only 720 for one thing, just because that's why I record, because I just, uh, there's no reason I think we're doing 1080 and wasting the size and the CPU and everything, but I'm going to see the bits here, and I see a little bit of a frame drop there, and that could be actually the stream that we're getting, I don't know, um, but bumper yet, yeah. but, oh, stream, a little bit of a, real quick about my process for the streamlining idea, and then I'm going to do my lap around the tape changing again. Um, so what I do is, so it spits that out, right, I have all this with graphics and switch, and there's Mike and Poughkeepsie, um, and everything, and I, I put my graphics on Final Cut Pro X, as much as editors bitch about it, it's been really nice for streamlining things. Because I have my like template from the week before, especially since I'm doing a serial thing, right? I load up the last one, I copy over everything from last week, I replace that one file in the middle, uh, I do all my audio editing in there, the audio tools in Final Cut Pro X, and I think a lot of this will, if you look at iMovie, that's why I said I think a lot of that stuff's in there too, if you dig for it. I don't think you're getting a fat EQ or something, but I, I throw a noise reduce on the thing because I know I got some room. I, I don't have a compressor or anything to you know spit that out. I got all these crazy hangout things and everything, so who knows what kind of background noise is in there. And uh, what else do I do? A couple other things. Oh, oh, uh, I, I, I got a weird um, balance issue I haven't figured out, so I, I go ahead and throw everything on mono, like dual mono. Um, so, so if there's even more editing you need to do in audio, you just pull it up as an audio editor and not worry about this, because you know this worked, because you lived through it, right? <laughs> so, uh, and I spit that out. And I can spit that out straight as an MP3, or spit that out as the video and throw it in compressor as a $50 program. That's part of the old Final Cut suite that you can just buy by itself. Final Cut Pro X is $300. It used to be $1,000 to get Final Cut Pro and soundtrack and this, and they split it all out. I also recommend Apple Motion if you want to get into a little bit of making your own graphics. Um, not as heady as Adobe After Effects. Uh, I saw the line go, Michael, you can agree with me. Motion is like an easier version of After Effects, right? Yeah, it's like the uh, poor man's After Effects. Yeah, so if you want to get in and kind of make your own graphics, and you should be able to probably output that in a way that Wirecast will take it. So you can make your own stuff. I'm using stock stuff here for the most part. Yeah, this is stock. This is stock. It, it comes with it. They, they come with Wirecast. I'm not even like thinking my own custom graphics at this point. Uh, I want to. I really want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, time. Just time. Um, so. Uh, so, where's that? Lighting, sir. We need, we need a that, was, that was a 
the week where Google Hangout was down, remember? I was on my iPad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then there's the weeks where Hangout doesn't want to work. <laughs> that was fun. Because I had the same thought. I was like, well, why do I want to do that? Yeah, yeah, that's not even. The video podcast is summed up just like ultimate frustration for me. Oh, yeah, I, and, and we, thought, we were talking about podcast therapy last night. My night is like, why am I doing this? Oh, that's why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? Oh, that's why I'm doing this. Like, every week I go through this emotional roller coaster uh, for it. So, uh, and this, this is, this is it. So, that was a little glimpse into my process and the higher end and some options and some options I wish I had the money for and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So, I'm, like, I hopefully that gives you guys an idea of kind of the potential, what you can do with this. Um, guy, uh, again, generally guys to watch, I really think, again, that this week, in te- this week in tech is, like, I think the epitome of what you can do with, like, a studio set up. I mean, to the point where they say, they, like, we've made a million-dollar studio so we could get advertisers at this point. And, and, and it looks really good, and it's, you can take a lot of concepts uh, from what they do. And they, they've got some really good stuff, if you can dig into our wiki, about, like, especially the older stuff. Because they had this, really, and I emulated this to a disgusting fault. Uh, they had something called a Skyposaurus, which is where I got a lot of this idea of splitting off everybody Skype, where it was four monitors, like, kind of attached together in a really nice kind of stand, and each one had their own kind of mini PC, and, um, and it was, like, four screens behind them. And I did the same thing. I said, all I had access to was CRT monitors, so I don't have any money. So I was just <laughs> kind of stacked and looked crappy behind me. So but if you look into some of the old videos, it's in there, and it's so laughable. Or you'll find some of the old, old, old ones where there's just like a green sheet behind me, and I didn't have any process for this. So I just took a webcam or a camera and pointed at a, a monitor that had Will on it on Skype. And, or, or maybe at a certain point when Skype lets you start doing group calling when it was in beta, and we could get three people on there, and there's a camera just pointing at a monitor that was doing that. It was, it was we, we uh, tried everything to get to this point. So, uh, and I think we sell it into something pretty decent, and we'll see what like So, anything else? I hope you got something out of this. Uh, it'll be online and everything, and if you want, please check it out, sortronmedia.com. I got shows for everybody, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to keep doing this for some reason. So. <laughs>